One of the first things we do when we build a website is we set up our page structure. In Muse, this was called the plan view. In Architect, it's underneath the Pages tab. So when I bring up the flyout here, we have pages and pop-ups. Let's start with pages. We can create a new page here, and then it brings up an option that says, what kind of page do we want to create? These are just some predefined templates. So if we do a contact page, by default, it might throw in a contact form and a map. If we do an our team page, it's going to give us a nice grid of team photos. You don't have to use these, they're just suggestions. We can create a completely blank page, just like that. Let's give it a title, we'll say events, and click add page. So you can see that that page is now in our layout and it's completely blank other than the header and footer that we've already defined. We can also drag and drop the page within our bar here on the left. So now you can see on our navigation menu by dragging it to the right spot, it's automatically ordered itself. We also have page settings. If we click on any of these gear icons, it's going to bring up the settings for each page. So we could rename the page. We can hide it in navigation so we can hide it on different devices. We could duplicate it, which is actually very powerful. If you built a page you love, you can use that page as a template and keep duplicating it for all your future builds. We can change the page URL, do some SEO work, and even set a password if we want the page password protected. Let's click on the page URL option, and it brings up this whole big list of settings. So if we wanted the events URL to have a different URL, we can change it right there. There's some SEO settings. If we want search engines not to index this page, we could turn that on if it had sensitive information on it. Then we can change things like the page title, the page description, page keywords, setting the password, and lastly, header HTML. Header HTML is really useful if you're going to embed something like Google Tag Manager just on a single page. You can also edit global header HTML directly in the settings option on the left. Let me close this box. So let's bring the pages option back up and you'll notice here on the bottom it says add site languages. And if we do that, it brings up a dialogue and it says choose and manage languages on your site. However, they do recommend you completely build your site before adding other languages. So we can click add languages, select our language. Let's go with Dutch, click done. And then we can turn on automatic translation or manual. So if we click save when we have manual on, then what we'll do is we'll change each item based on the specific language it should be. So once we've done that, it says position the language selector on the page and click done. Here's the language selector in the corner. I'm just gonna move it over a bit and click done. So it says, congratulations, you've added new languages to your site. Review and validate each language, and you need to make changes and modify things based on the language that you're using. So let's click Got It. Then you can see we have a new drop down up here, and it gives us little symbols for what language we want to be working in. And then we can go ahead and edit the site for each language. It's a really cool and really powerful feature. I'm just going to go back in the Manage Site Languages. I'm going to delete that out for now and click Save. Okay, so we're back to just English. Next up, let's go in the Pages tab and let's look at this pop-ups option. So a pop-up is simply an overlay or an advertising message that you want to show your visitors. And if we click New Pop-up, then we get some, of course, pre-built designs that can kind of give us some suggestions. Well, let's just do a More Info pop-up and let's leave the name as More Info and Add Pop-up. Then we're given our design view for this single pop-up. So we can really customize this based on our needs. We also get a notification called display this pop-up using a personalization rule. I'll cover personalization later on, but basically what that is saying is you can show this pop-up to a very specific group of users, either location-based, time-based, it's really powerful feature. If we wanna get out of editing this pop-up, we can simply go back to pages and we're given our normal page list and we can swap between the two at any point. Let's just jump to our home page, and let's just look at the navigation real quick. So I have a navigation bar set up here. It's within the header area. And if I click on this orange header box and I click edit content, it's going to give us some options. So we can set a sticky header, basically a pinned header that stays when scrolling and some options to hide it on the page. If we go into the design view, you can change some header and navigation layout options. So there's tons preset up in here. We could also change the style of the header area. We can set something called a shrinking header. So if we turn that on, what happens is when we scroll down, the header is actually going to shrink. See how cool that is. Let's turn that off for now. And we can also change the spacing of the header if we just want a little bit more room. Setting up navigation is very simple. For the most part, it's automatic. It's going to pull in the pages that you define in the pages box. 
If you don't want a page to show up in your navigation, you simply click the gear icon, say hide in navigation, and choose the device where you don't want it shown. That's it for pages and navigation. In our next video, let's have a look at how to build a site in terms of structure, the ability to use rows and columns to establish a grid.